Good morning, church. How many of you are excited to be in the house of the Lord? Anybody excited to be in the house of the Lord? I was glad when they said unto me, let's go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Love standing up here worshiping with these guys. There was another guy standing up here worshiping. I love worshiping in the presence of the Lord with my brothers. And I appreciate you men coming and setting the tone in worship. I love that. And I'm just glad to be in the house of the Lord. Anybody else just seriously, are you just glad to be here? It's good to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. The best is yet to come. She got it. I don't know who it was. Is that you, Janet? Thanks, Janet. I appreciate you being here. Somebody, somebody over there. Okay, let me try again. The best is yet to come. That's better. Now, here's the thing. I don't need you to just hear it. I need you to open your spirit to the truth that the best is yet to come. So let's pray real quick. Father, thank you that you're here. Thank you that we can stand in your house and experience your presence, certainly. But I thank you for your written word that records truth to us. I thank you for your son, Jesus, who paid the price, his ransom. We could not even comprehend. We still can't even comprehend to this day. Thank you that everything's changed because of Jesus. And we thank you that the best is yet to come. Open now our spiritual eyes and spiritual ears to hear your voice and your word this morning. And those in agreement said amen and amen. Say with me, the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Let's say it a couple more times. I need to make sure you're with me. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Let me tell you, if you're in the house of the Lord or if you're in the church and you believe that the best days are behind you, you've got a problem. Let me just say it again. If we believe, Adrian, that the best days of the church, of the living, mighty, resurrected God are 1905 in the Azusa Street Revival. We got a problem as a church. The best is yet to come. Open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. I want to declare, because some of you don't believe me, but you might believe the word of the Lord. I want to declare the word of the Lord to you this morning in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, where it says this, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love Him. That's good news. Let me read it again. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined or conceived what God has in store for those who love Him. The best is yet to come. Did you know we serve a good God? Did you know that God is still on his throne? Did you know his best is still coming to this church? I got a word for you this morning. I'm excited, but I got to lay the groundwork here, okay? So I'm going to be a little bit slow here on the front end because if you don't hear it, he who has ears, let him hear. If you don't hear it, you won't hear it. The best is yet to come. God is not done doing miracles in his church. Four of us. See, this is why I'm saying this. I'm not saying this to excite you. I'm saying it because the word of the Lord declares to us today that no eye has seen and no ear has heard and no mind has even imagined, Dave, what God has in store for those who love him. The best is yet to to come. This is not a mantra that I'm wearing a t-shirt for to say like, oh, let's get excited on Sunday morning. I am speaking the word of the Lord to the church in Lodi, California, that the best is yet to come, that God's best work is not behind him. It is in front of him. The best is yet to come. You say, I still don't believe you, pastor. Bear with me. In Psalm chapter 34, verse 15, it says this, the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. The best is yet to come. Now, I could just go forward, but I want to make sure you get this. And I get it, because some of you are like, I don't really believe the best is yet to come. And I get that. So I'm going to say it again. The best 
is yet to come. Either God's word is true or it isn't, and I believe it's true. Let me keep going. Second Chronicles chapter 16, For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to Him. God is looking for a reason to bless you, church. You know why pastors have said this for hundreds of years? Because it's been true for hundreds of years. God is not looking for a reason to blast you. He's looking for a reason to bless you. The best is yet to come. James chapter 4. Draw near to God and He will draw near to you. The best is yet to come. Hebrews chapter 10. So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. I'm here to remind the church that our confidence is a Godfidence in Him. It's not in what we see and touch in here. It's all going to go away. The best is yet to come if it is birthed in the truth and the word of Jesus Christ. And I'm here to tell you on the, the outset of 2018 that the best is yet to come. Matthew chapter 5, Jesus says, rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. I get excited. Pastor Bill, we got reward waiting for us in heaven. That's all we need. We're not living for this. We're living for that. May I remind the church this morning, the best is yet to come. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived for what God has in store for those who love Him. Do you love Him, church? Are, are you committed to the Lord? The best is yet to come. I love this. In Revelation 22, Jesus says, Behold, I am coming soon, and my reward is with me. Glory to God. And I will give to everyone according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. The best is yet to come. God's best work is not behind us. I'm going to say it again until somebody gets it. God's best work is not 2004. It is still to come. The best is yet to come. I want to remind the church this morning that God's best for you is better than your best for you. God's best for you is far better than your best for you. I want to remind the church that God is in control that he remains in control, that he's in charge of your life, that he's in charge of this church, that he's in charge of this transition. A week or two ago, Pastor Bill got up with strength, full of the Holy Spirit, and spoke towards the transition. Anybody blessed by that message a couple weeks ago? Glory to God. We can clap for the glory of the Lord. Thank you, Pastor, for being a pastor, shepherding your church. Um, and I say it, and I don't mind saying it, but we love, I love you, Pastor. I love your heart for the church. I'm so grateful to be serving the church with you. And, uh, and we are grateful. Come on, let's show Pastor Bill our love and our appreciation. But this transition belongs to God. It's not about me and it's not about Bill. It's about God. A couple weeks ago, Pastor broached the conversation of the transition, and I know that the conversation and the theme, the best is yet to come, are not reconcilable for a few within the church. And so I'm going to talk about it this morning. I'm going to remind you that the best is yet to come because God is mighty, because God is good, and His word does not return void and no eye has seen and no ear has heard and no mind has conceived what God has in store for those who love him. Let me uh, just talk for a couple minutes this morning. I'm going to move as quickly as I can and, 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 and recount to you a little bit of the transition over the last year and a half. For those of you who might be visiting or, or maybe you're not aware, um, our church is in the middle, really in the middle right now of a 36-month transition between Pastor Bill and myself. Now, let me just say something. I'm not uncomfortable talking about it. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay? And so if you're uncomfortable talking about it, come talk with me. Knock on my door. I'll be happy to sit down. Pastor will be happy to sit. We'll sit down with you together. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. But I want to remind you that the best is yet to come. And I want to remind you that God's best work is not behind us. It's in front of us. I want to talk about this for a minute, about in the spring of 2015, my wife and I, we were pastoring a church in Florida. Some of you may or may not know, know the story, but we had moved down to Florida about a year and a half before that, and we really felt like that was going to be our home. Um, but isn't it funny that God's best for you is better than your best for you? Isn't that interesting how that works? See, we had it all figured out. And then God was like, no, because that's not my best for you. That's your best for you. Friends, you're either coming out of a transition, in a transition, or going into a transition in your life. The notion that we're in control of what's going on is a lie. It's a falsity. And so I just want to remind you that we're all in transition all the time. And if we walk with God, we believe that the best is yet to come. Some of you still aren't getting it, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to linger here for a minute. But let me just say this. In the spring of 2015, my wife and I began to feel like the Spirit of the Lord was, was stirring us to pray about another transition. And, and we just thought, well, this is a bit of a surprise, um, and, but we'll continue to pray about it. So we gave it to the Lord, and I had a friend. Uh, keep in mind, I lived about an hour and a half south of Orlando and south of Tampa, Florida. We were pastoring a church down there, and... and um, the Lord began to stir us. And I had a friend who was a children's pastor um, at, a, at a wonderful church in Orlando. And he had been talking to me for like two years, like, you need to come join our staff. You need to come. To, we're just buddies. You guys, you talk with your friends and we're close and we still communicate to this day. So he was texting to me and, and I just, I was joking. I was, you know, we just kind of banter back and forth. I said, uh, Pastor Dan, I said, I love what God is doing us here. He's, this is where we're supposed to be. This is what we're supposed to be doing. But this moment came along where uh, they began to look for a senior teaching associate pastor. Now, if you don't know, that's my title right now, okay? So they began to look for a senior teaching associate pastor in Orlando, Florida. And he texted me. He said, he said bro, he's like, you got to, you, this is yours. This has got your name all over it. You need to do this. And, and so I was like, all right. I said, you know what? Uh, my wife and I have been praying. We began to feel like God was stirring us. And so we took a step of faith and we applied for this position. There were thousands of people interested. It was crazy. It's a very, very big church between three and 5,000 people running over a weekend. Big, big time church. And, and, and we expressed interest for this position. And a long story short, I got involved with a search group called Vanderblumen applying for this church in Orlando, Florida. Are you guys with me? I had no interest whatsoever in leaving the state of Florida. But how many of you know that God's best for you is better than your best for you? How many of you know you're either coming out of transition, you're in transition, or you're going into transition? And how many of you believe when you walk with God, the best is yet to come? And so to make a really long story short, glory to God, to make a long story as short as I possibly can, to give myself time to preach the message, we began this process and we made it to the final five candidates. And we just thought, this is it. This is amazing. I can't believe. We, this is our conversation in our home. God must have brought us down here to bring us over here. Anybody been in those conversations? You're just trying to figure it out. Come on, somebody. Don't fool yourself. Just because I got the mic doesn't mean I got it all figured out. Some of you are like, hey, man, uh, that. No. <laughs> That'll bless some of you this afternoon when you get what I just said. Um, but it was good. It was good. And so we applied to this church, and I had no interest in, in looking beyond this particular church a week or two before we were scheduled to go interview with the board of directors and the senior pastor and the executive leadership team. The pastor was diagnosed with cancer. And the entire search group and panel and everything got put on pause. I didn't hear from them for about four months because let me tell you, God's best for you is better than your best for you. I had absolutely zero interest. My wife and I, will, we will tell you the truth, zero interest in getting in this search and putting out resumes. I hate that stuff. I had no interest in it. But this is the funny thing. Right around Thanksgiving of 2015, I get a call from a guy named Tracy. So Tracy is the guy who I'd worked with with this church in Orlando. And, and I had told him, I do not want to get into this game of like putting in applications. I, I, I didn't feel like that's what God was leading me to do. Are you with me? 
And so uh, Tracy calls me. It's on a Friday afternoon. God is my witness. I, I want to say it's probably about 1 o'clock in the afternoon, Eastern Standard Time. And he says, uh, he says hey, Paul, there's a, there's a church in Lodi, California. And that's when you know you're not local, all right? So I called it Lodi for a couple of weeks. God is my witness, all right? So there's this church in Lodi, California. And he said, you know, the Holy Spirit brought you to mind. Because God's best for you is better than your best for you. He said, God put you on my heart this afternoon. He said, here's the thing. He said, they've been in this process for about eight months. And the window for application for the senior teaching associate closes in about six hours. He said, would you pray about joining? And I was like, no. I don't want to go to California. But God's best for you is better than your best for you. So I called my wife and I said, sweetheart, I got a call from Tracy. I built a good relationship with him at that point. I said, um, Tracy called. This guy's a maniac. And he said, there's a church in Lodi, California. And he wants us. What do you think? And she literally, I'm telling you, the Spirit of the Lord is on this. She goes, what have we got to lose? Whatever. <laughs> my response, God is my witness, was, we're not moving to California. We'll go with it. But God's best for you is better than your best for you. God's best for you, friends, in whatever transition you're in, personally, whatever is going on, is better than your best for you. The best is yet to come. I believe that we will see the best days of our lives, the best days of our church. I believe they are to come because God is in charge of transition. I want to say something here this morning. There were three things that I began to pray about openly. My wife and I began prayer points. We began praying about these three things, and she knew that these things were critically important to me. I began to pray and ask God that he would bring us to a church, that he would bring us to a church where there was a senior pastor who was a pastor of strength and character. Thank you, Lord. I began to pray that God would bring us to a church that was committed to a long-term transition. I had never even heard of a long-term transition. God's best for you is better than your best. I remember talking to my pastor buddies. Pastor Bill, you've been in hundreds of these conversations where you're talking with transitions that have gone south. And I remember telling my pastor buddies, saying, you know, I'm really trusting God that he would bring me to a church where there's a pastor with a long-term vision enough to care and shepherd the transition and to be part of the church well beyond the transition. And they were looking at me like, why would you want that? I'm like, why wouldn't you want that? Because it's not about you, bozo. It's about your church. That's what, I, that's what I felt like saying to these. Pastor, how many times have, have you been in conversations with these guys and they're thinking two weeks down the road. Now, you've got to understand, God's best is better than our best for ourselves. And God is in charge of transition. And we're in transition. But God's in charge of transition. And the third thing that I began to pray for, and this blesses me, I'm fighting emotion even as I say it. The mission statement of our church in Florida was connecting people to Jesus. And I began to pray that God would bring us to a church that's unashamedly connecting people to Jesus. Do you know what your mission statement is here at this church? Connecting people to Jesus, to the community, and to each other. Praise God for his goodness. Amen? Don't tell me that God's best isn't better than your best for you. Don't tell me that God isn't the God of transition. And church, I want you to hear me real loud and proud right now. Pastor Bill is not going anywhere, okay? I'm telling you, yeah, let's clap. Let's clap because this is God's plan for our transition. I told Pastor when we started this process years ago, I said, under one condition, Pastor, as best as I can remember, and you can vouch for this, I said, as long as you don't go anywhere. Did you hear me, friends? I don't need applause. What I want you to hear is this. Our heart is for each other and for the church. I want you to relax. I want you to hear my words with a smile and love and care coming from this newbie pastor right here to say, I'm not letting Pastor Bill go anywhere. He's going to become the founding pastor in about a year and a half. You're still going to see him. You're still going to have his voice on the microphone. He's even going to preach. He just doesn't know it yet. Friends, God is the God of transition. 
I thank God for the wisdom and the leadership of the board of directors and the board of elders and Pastor Bill Cummins and Dottie to understand that transitions aren't bad. And they can honor God. And so what I want to do this morning is remind us that the best is yet to come. I want to tell you, friends, right now, you say, Pastor, what do, what do the years coming look like? I don't know, but this is what I know. I'm committed to bring staff who are hungry for the presence of God. I'll say it again. I'm committed to bring Pastor Daryl's who are hungry for the presence of God. I'm committed to see people with Pastor Bill who will pray and fast and seek the Lord together and who understand that the church is committed to people. I hope that doesn't scare you too bad because you can email me at Pastor Bill at BearCreekChurch.com if you don't like it. Pastor, did I read your sermon the right way? Okay, I just wanted to make sure. So, you know, I'm confident that the best is yet to come. I've got confidence that the best is yet to come. Let me tell you, some of you, I've, I've heard it before, man, that dude, Pastor Paul, he's super arrogant. No, I'm really not. I am confident. There's a big difference. I'm serious. If you talk with me, you sit down with me, I'm just a dude trying to figure it out. But I've got confidence. And there's a difference, Pastor Bill. You know what I'm talking about. When God is doing something, come on, let's do it. I'm, I'm getting carried away. I'm not, even, I'm not even on my notes. This is not good. <laughs> Pastor Darrell, this is not good, buddy. This is not good. Open your Bibles to Numbers chapter 13. I want to direct our attention this morning to the Word of God as it relates to a people in transition. I want to see what the word of the Lord says regarding transition. I want to see what the word of the Lord... Anybody still believe in the Bible? How many of you believe the Bible is useful, right? That it's good instruction for us. That you can learn from it. That it's got the words of God in written form for us today. And so I'm going to read a couple of verses to you. But before I address those verses, I'm just sitting the stage. I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story, okay? So we got a people in transition. It's the Hebrew people. It's the Israelites. And they are coming from Egypt. Say with me, Egypt. They are walking towards their destination, the land of Canaan, the promised land. So they're no longer in Egypt, but they're not yet where they're going. They're not where they were, but they're not where they're going. They're not where they were, but they're not where they're going. They are in transition. And there's amazing stories of, of how God moves and, and, and the miracles that he displays on his people in transition. And so I'm going to reference some things and then we're going to read some things together. Okay, but in Numbers chapter 13, verse 1, the word of the Lord, and you can read this, the word of the Lord comes to Moses and he says, I declare, go and explore the land. And you know the story. So Moses, he takes 12 spies, say with me, 12 spies, and 12 of them, they go out, they do what they're supposed to do. Now I want to read to you some instruction from Numbers chapter 13, verses 17 through 20. And this is what the word, oh, I'm not even there yet. Hold on. This is what the word the Lord said. All right, now we're there. This is what it says. Moses gave the men these instructions as he sent them out to explore the land. He said, go north through the Negev into the hill country and see what the land is like. And find out whether the people living there are strong or weak few or many. See what kind of land they live in. Is it good or bad? Do they have town? Do the towns have walls? Now things are a little bit different now, okay? Or are they unprotected like open camps? Verse 20, is the soil fertile or poor? Are there many trees? Do your, be do your best to bring back samples of the crops that you see. And so the word of the Lord comes to Moses. He sends out 12 spies and he says this, go and strategize. He said, go explore the land. Go look at the soil. Go see the walls. Go, go see what the people are like. Are they big? Are they tall? Many of you know the story. They were big. The opposition was big. Moses said, go out, look at the soil. May I suggest to you that the word of the Lord is this this morning. Go look at the soil of the people in this season. Go out and see if their defenses are too tall to a people in transition. Because there's a season in transition where you've got to strategize to see what God is going to do. I submit to you, Bear Creek Church, that right now we are in a season of strategizing. 
I submit to you, Bear Creek Church, that right now we are praying, we are asking God about the soil of the hearts. We're measuring their defenses. Are they open? What people groups are open to receive us? Which ones are closed to us? You say, does it matter? Strategy matters. So Moses instructs the people in transition, go out and strategize. Is the land good? Are the people strong or weak? Come back with soil. Come back with crops. Come back with the goods. Go and strategize. Don't just be like this. Sorry, camera person. There's a season of strategy in transition. But God is the God of transition. And I'm okay with that. I'm going to keep going this morning. I promise you it's going to get good in the next 10 minutes when I'm done, okay? But the response of the people is amazing. And in Numbers chapter 13, verse 25 through 29, you know the story. The spies come back and 10 of them have a negative report. They say the people are too big. This is not possible. It's not going to happen. We will go in there and be devoured. There's no way that we can advance. And then Joshua and Caleb come back. And they have a very different response. In Joshua chapter, thir- excuse me, in Numbers chapter 13, verse 30, I reference it because I want you to see it with me. Verse 30 of 13, it says this, but Caleb tried to quiet the people as they stood before Moses. And this is what Caleb said. Why? Because he had confidence. He saw the same report. He saw the same city walls. He saw the same adversity. He saw the same hard soil of the heart, but he was full of God fitness. And this is what he said. He said, let's go at once to take the land. We certainly can do it. God's looking for some Caleb's and Joshua's. He's looking for people to be bold and courageous who believe that the best is yet to come, who believe that God's best work isn't 2004, 1998, or 1975, it's 2020, and 2030, and 2040. Are you hearing me? The best is yet to come, and God is looking for Caleb's and Joshua who are full of a confidence, but looking at the same situation, the people with negative responses are. You say, what's God looking for in transition? He's looking for boldness and courage. He's looking for somebody to come back and say, I see you problem. I raise you, Jesus Christ. I heard the report of the enemy, but also heard the declaration of my God. And my standard is not going to be the report of the world. My standard is going to be the message of God in my life and for my children and for my church. And I believe that the best is yet to come. I believe we've not seen anything yet. I haven't even started. The story continues. Caleb's reply is this, where do I sign up? And he's watching these other ten people influence the community with a message of hell that the challenge in this place that our God is greater than any challenge that we will ever face that we ever have faced that we could ever imagine because no eye has seen and no ear has heard and no mind has even imagined what God has in store for those who love best is yet to come. We haven't seen anything yet in the house of God. And I believe it. Confidence. Somebody in here hears what I'm saying. That God is just beginning to do something amazing. I've never done this, but I feel like the Lord wants me to give a word to this guy over here. God's got something great for you. You and the big shoulders and the gray shirt. God's doing something in your life. I feel like the Spirit of the Lord wants me to tell you in front of your peers. I'm not trying to be sensational. 
feel very led to do that. That God's beginning to work in you and there's something amazing going on that trusts me. Thank you, Lord. Father, we pray that you'd receive that, that you'd breathe your spirit and testify to the truth that's in that, to this brother, in Jesus' name. And so the response of the people is all too well known after the spies come back and they rebel against God's plan because they think their best is better than God's best for them. But I want to tell you that God's best for you is better than your best for you. And the people who have seen all the goodness of God forget what God has done and choose to believe the negativity in the transition over the good word in the transition. Is that direct enough? And then this is the message because the payout's coming. I love talking to you guys about the Lord. Numbers chapter 14, we're going to read verse 20. I want you to see what the word of the Lord declares this morning. And I'm going to say it again. The best is yet to come. God's best work is not behind us. It's in front of us, Pastor Bill. God's best work in your life is still ahead. I believe it, Pastor Bill. God's work in our lives, his best work is still to come, Josie. God is not done. He is still on the throne. He has not lost his power. We read it this morning. He is the alpha and the omega. He is the beginning and the end. And his word is the standard in the house of the Lord. Not the report of the doctors. Not the report of your realtor. Not the report of your physician. Not the report of your mother-in-law. It is the report of the Lord that is the standard in the house of God. And I want to read to you now this amazing Amazing passage of scripture in Numbers chapter 14 verse 20 and listen to this the people have rebelled against God and Moses and Aaron have fallen on their face and said father don't kill them They're petitioning God to not wipe out the people who again and again and again and again have forgotten about the magnificence of God and this is the reply then the Lord said, I will pardon them as you have requested, but as surely as I live and as surely as the earth is filled with the Lord's glory, not one of these people will ever enter that land. They have all seen my glorious presence and the miraculous signs I performed both in Egypt and in the wilderness, but again and again and again and again and again and again, and again they have tested me by refusing to listen to my voice. Verse 23, they have, they will never, excuse me, they will never even see the land I swore to give their ancestors. None of those who have treated me with contempt will ever see it. Listen to the voice of the Lord in verse 24. But my servant, Caleb, has a different attitude. That bird's got a different attitude. <laughs> Demon bird. But my servant, Caleb, has a different attitude than the others have. He has remained loyal to me. Not Pastor Paul. Not Pastor Daryl. He's remained loyal to me, says the Lord. Should I keep going? I think I will. So I will bring him into the land he explored. I want to say this this morning. There are two things that God values in transition. Listen to me, church. The first thing that God values in transition is an attitude. An attitude that's different than the report that recognizes without confidence what's going on. God values attitude when he's doing things in our life attitude matters and god values attitude the second thing and these are in your notes the second thing is that god values loyalty to him god values loyalty to him this isn't a construct of paul I'm telling you the word of the Lord this morning that he values attitude. But my servant 
Caleb has a different attitude and has remained loyal to me. And because of this, he will enter the land that I have promised. This is the word of the Lord for a people in transition. And I believe is a word of the Lord for a people in transition. If you keep your attitudes right and loyal to the Lord, then you will enter the land that he's promised. We're not where we were. Things look a little different. They sound a little different. Faces are changing, but they're not where we are going. We are in transition, but the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come, and it gets even better. I'm about to start preaching, Pastor Daryl. He's on his way back here. See? Numbers chapter 14, because the story continues. God's Word, if you read it, that bird needs to read it. I need to read something. I need my 22. Somebody got way too excited in the front row when I said that. The NRA is meeting after service in Portable C. Wow. That guy watches Fox News, I'll tell you that right now. I didn't say I was bad. Come on, people, relax. We can have a sense of humor. People take things way too serious. It's good to have fun in the church. You know, it's the Spirit of God that brings love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. Did you hear joy? Some of you are like, "Mm -mm, that's not a fruit of the Spirit. I've never had it, and I'm full of the Spirit. (laughs) Don't argue with me. Galatians 5. Your turn will come next week when Pastor Bill's preaching. All right. Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14. Listen to the conclusion of this story in transition. Listen to this. This is the Lord responding to a people. And he says this in verse 28. Now tell them this. As surely as I live, declares the Lord, I will do to you the very things I heard you say. You say, what? Let me break it down like this. And this is the final point in your notes because I always forget one. I'm going to make sure I get it right here. Fate follows focus. Now focus on me, not the bird of hell, okay? Fate follows focus. Fate follows focus. I will say it again. Fate follows focus. And focus follows faith. Fate follows follows focus your fate will follow where your eyes are looking your fate will follow the conversations you're soaking up your fate will follow your feet into those relationships that are full of heaven or full of hell because fate follows focus in seasons of transition and focus follows faith I could say it a hundred times and many of you would still not get it. I will beseech you to go home and pray about it and bring it to the Lord. But let me just say it one more time. Fate follows our focus. And focus, our focus should follow our faith. I am telling you, I believe genuinely, Tracy, with all of my heart, that the best is yet to come. And I don't believe it because I want to be excited in the presence of God. I believe it because I've read the word of the Lord. I believe it because I don't believe God has done stirring in his church. I believe it because I know that God's plan is good for those who seek him. I know it because he's still a rewarder of those who seek him. And his word will not return void. I believe the miracles are going to be done in this place. I believe that this altar is going to be full of people who have seen the healing power of God rip cancer off their body and open blind eyes and restore relationships. I believe with all of my heart. I'm telling you I'm not saying this to be sensational. I believe it because I got a confidence that says, yeah, we're in transition, but we should go and take the land. We should go and take the land because our God is mighty, because He is able and He's prepared a way for For those who love and who seek Him to this day, I believe that the best is yet to come. I don't think we've seen anything yet. Anything. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. 
Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. You say, Pastor, what does the years to come look? This is what I'm praying about, and this is all I can tell you. We will put an emphasis on prayer. We will put an emphasis on the presence of God. And we will put an emphasis on the program of God, which is people. I believe that the best is yet to come. I believe, Pastor Bill, God wants to do a revival in the valley because of this church. I really believe that. I believe God is bringing in staff amidst this transition who are hungry for the things of God. I believe God is bringing people to stand with Caleb and Joshua's spirit and to say, come on. God's not done. We can still trust God for miracles in this place. And I know that I need to conclude. We're going to sing a song. Would you stand with me all over the house? I believe that our God is a God of miracles. I believe it. I could not stand up here. My wife will tell you the truth. I am as honest as honest comes. If you don't want my opinion, don't ask for it. She's shaking her head like, that is the truth. I could not stand here and tell you that I believe the best is yet to come if I did not believe it. And I don't believe it because I'm trying to create something that I want. I believe it because I'm standing on the words that he said were going to happen. For his glory, for the name of Jesus, for the advancement of the name of Jesus. Pastor Darrell. Would you lead us in a time of worship? We're going to go, just like he talked about, like Jehoshaphat. We're going to go with praise before our adversary. We're going to trust God. We're going to unify our spirits for a hot minute or two. You got nowhere else. Look, I got a game. And this is where I am. I like football, but I love Jesus. And I believe the best is yet to come. Pastor Darrell, let's lead us in worship this morning. One who made the let's worship together, church. We'll pray and close in a moment. He's moving here in front of me, moving here in front of me. The one who made the deaf to hear is silencing my every fear, silencing my every fear. I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. Hey. Who does impossible is reaching out to make me whole, reaching out to make me whole. The one who put death in its place, his life is throwing through my veins, his life is throwing through my veins. I believe in you, I believe. The God of miracles. I believe in you. I believe in you. Yeah. You're the God of miracles. He said, I believe, I believe. Say, I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. I believe in you, I believe in you, you're the God of miracles, oh. We serve a God of miracles, yes?
that can do enormously great things above all that we can ask or think. God was and is to come. The power of the risen one. The God who brings the dead to life. You're the God of miracles. You're the God of miracles. The God who was and is to come. Power of the risen one, the God who brings the dead to life. You're the God of miracles. You're the God of miracles. Say, I believe. Say, I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of I believe in you, I believe in you, you're the God of miracles, say it, I believe it, I believe in you, I believe in you, you're the God of miracles, I believe in you. I believe in you, you're the God of miracles. Our God is the God of miracles, amen? I believe I'm not the only one in here who's declaring that song in faith, believing that our God is a God of miracles, that the best is yet to come. We're going to dismiss in just a couple of minutes, but I'm going to invite the prayer partners down front at this time. Friends, if you're in here this morning, if you just need somebody to stand next to and lift a hand with in faith, or if you need prayer in your life, I'm going to encourage you to come down front as we close with song. I'm going to encourage you to come down front, meet with any of these wonderful people. They're prayed up, they're full of faith, they're trusting God for miracles in your life. Sometimes we just need somebody to carry our faith when we can't carry it ourselves. Amen? I'm going to encourage you to come down front. To bring your need, your petition to the Lord and the trust of the God of miracles that he is not done working in your life. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, come meet him at the altar today. Invite him to be Lord of your life. He'll forgive you of your sin. He'll change your future. He'll erase your past. He'll do lots of good things in your life. But you got to give your heart to him. We're going to sing through the song a couple more times. I'm going to come back up and dismiss you. Let's worship together. The prayer partners are down here. Let's be in the presence of the Lord. I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. I believe in you. I believe. God of miracles. Oh, 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 I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of Saying, I, I believe, yeah. You're the God of miracles. Say, I believe, I believe, yeah. You're the God of miracles. You believe, say, I believe, say, I believe. Yeah. To the good and the bad. You're the God of miracles. I know that you can do great things. I believe. I believe. You're the God of miracles. Hey.
there's anybody in the house who is able to pray, I've got people down here who are waiting to pray. That's important. If you're an usher, if you're an elder, um, I'm going to ask you to come down. We've got people lined up. God's doing something. If you're physically able to join us, we got some people who need help praying. I don't want them to wait beyond what they need to. The presence of the Lord is here. The best is yet to come, church. The best is yet to come. Because God is good. Oh, that's for somebody. God is good. All the time. And all the time, God is good. He is good. He is faithful. He's looking for a reason to bless you, not to blast you. I've got several people who are available to pray up here if anybody's waiting. Thank you, friends, for joining us down front. Anybody else need prayer in the house this morning? We're going to stay in an attitude of worship for a couple minutes. But I want to say this in response for those of you who are, are here and not needing to come down and pray right now or not desiring prayer, that the best is yet to come, that God's best days are still in front of the church, that until he comes back, when Jesus splits the skies and the end is here and he comes back to rule and reign, that's the end. But until then, the best is yet to come. He is still on the throne. We serve a God of miracles. Amen. I want to pray and dismiss you, but I want to say one final thing in an attitude of worship. Pastor Darrell, you guys can stay right here for another minute. I said this first service, and I want to say it here again as well. This song, that our God is a God of miracles, is special because I found out why it was written. It's anointed and it's a declaration of a God that is still working miracles. And it was written by a pastor named Chris from Bethel Redding in Northern California. And he wrote this song in response to his infant son's death. He wrote this song as a declaration, Steve. He wrote this song as a declaration that his faith would not be lost by what his eyes declared. He came back like Joshua and Caleb, that God is still able, that he's still on the throne. And I want to encourage you this morning. It doesn't matter what you are going through, that our God is still able, that he's still on the throne, that the best is yet to come, and he is still a God of miracles. I'm going to pray for you, dismiss you. The altars are open. Pastor Darrell, you don't mind staying up here for another just few moments? In an attitude of worship, let me pray and dismiss you. Father, I thank you that your presence is here in the house. I thank you that you're doing something that no man can do and that it's for your glory. That you're restoring hope. That you're stirring faith. But you're also healing bodies. That you're healing marriages. That you're healing people. I thank you that your standard is the standard in the house of God. Not the standard of the doctors, not the standard of the people that we hear, but your standard is the banner. And that means we have victory. That means the best is yet to come. Father, I pray your blessing upon your church, that they would go today in the grace of God, that they would go in the power of God, that you bless them and cover them and keep them safe on the way home. I thank you, Father, for stirring in our spirits an expectation that the best is yet to come, and we declare it for this house in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you next week as we continue in the series. The best is yet to come.